So in this Mills project video, we're going to be making some modifications to the standard Sherline vise. Three things we're going to be doing to it here. Um, first, we're going to be placing some threaded holes on either side of the back face. And I'll show you what those can be used for here in a moment. And you'll see that type of feature on a lot of uh, larger vices, so this isn't really an original idea. Um, I've not seen anybody do it to the Sherline, but I'm sure they have before. The other two come from one of the tips on Sherline's uh, tip section, where their users submit tips, and I'll put the name of the person. I don't have the paper handy. And this, to me, is uh, one of them is really, really useful. The other one is fairly useful if you're doing larger pieces. So we've put an angle on the end here rather than it being square. And this allows us to slide our jaw back further and be able to clamp larger pieces. And as I cut it, I didn't cut the slot uh, very deep. I could have gone a little bit deeper, but I can almost get a, a two and a half inch piece in there. Whereas before, I, I believe it would stop at just over two inches or two and an eighth inch. If you wanted to, you could take this slot further out and, and get it to where it open up even a little bit more. The other one is on the underside and the webs down here. So we've taken those down uh, quite a bit and, and I actually got a little worried when I saw how far I'd taken them that it wouldn't still hold and clamp, uh, but it does hold just fine. I probably could have gone even a little bit further. The advantage here is it allows us to adjust the vise much more rapidly without needing to take uh, the, the locking mechanism as far in and out for different size work pieces. So here I've clamped a, a one inch piece and normally you'd have to unscrew quite a bit before you could get the, the locking cam to move for you again. But in this case, I can quickly move to another jaw position and tighten it back down. So this will be a big time saver. Just definitely makes your life easier. You don't have to be sitting there uh, spinning this screw in and out, particularly if you're trying to work around some cutters, some cutting tools, or under the head of the mill where it might not be quite so easy and convenient to get at that. Now, the purpose of these guys on the side so it gives us a place to put a stop block. So that stop block can be something simple, like one of our strap clamps, or we could custom make a piece. Now, this doesn't interfere with the opening and closing of the jaws, but if we wanted to put a work piece in here and index it up against the side, we've got a place to index against on the side of the vise, and we can flip that around to the other side, obviously, as well. And no matter which orientation we go with, this will allow us to do that. Additionally, if we wanted to index a piece, say, inward a little bit, we've got that threaded hole on our strap clamps that we can use to fine-tune and adjust a stop in and out wherever we want it. We could then take another nut and lock that tight on there if we wanted to so it wouldn't move or wiggle. And then last, We've got the ability to extend this out quite a bit more. By using a longer piece of threaded rod, and this could be uh, considerably longer than what I've got here, you know, three inch piece or even four inch long piece, whatever you wanted. And then we can set up arrangements such as this to allow us to hold the work piece and index it further away if we so desired. So this is just a very uh, handy and, and convenient item to have and you can you know I just grabbed a strap clamp here you can use whatever you want you know you can set these up to where they'll swing out of the way fairly easily you can put fine adjustments with threaded screws in here if you wanted to um, you can thread this in deeper and lock it or use a nut to lock it up against there so it won't rotate you could even do a, um, a turret post style so this is a, a round piece and you have different lengths set, and you can just spin it to whatever index length you want. We may end up making one of those later, or you may see one of those later in use. I don't think I'll do a video dedicated to it, because it's fairly simple. 
But those are the items we're going to cover in this video, those three modifications. And I think you'll find them very useful to add additional functionality to your vise with a very small amount of work. So the first item I'm going to work on is the hole in the sides of the vise. I will put one on either side. The location isn't critical. We're not making a through hole. Um, you are certainly welcome to make a through hole. And if you wanted to, say, drill a quarter inch all the way through, and then you could put a threaded rod in on this face uh, to act as a clamping surface for that through hole to slide, uh, similar to the way it works on the head of the Sherline lathe and mill with its clamping kit. So we'll start out with a number zero center drill. And I've center punched this hole approximately centered from either face here, which was 0.99 since this is two inches. And then I've also centered it from uh, this point to this point. And I don't recall what that measurement is. The, the location again isn't critical since we're not trying to get these holes to meet. One thing we just want to make sure of is that we're not too close to any edge um, that we're going to be going through solid metal because we don't want to deform anything or, or put anything out of alignment here. And we have these two screws on the back that hold the steel face on. So we want to make sure that we stay away from those. You could go a little bit higher if you wanted to. I just thought it'd be nice to center it. Before we start drilling, I want to mention our, our clamping setup here. I just have a one, two, three block clamped through one of the holes here. Um, if you wanted to, you could clamp it through two and get a, a little bit better hold. But since this is a fairly light drilling operation, I'm not too terribly concerned. In reality, we could probably get by with just a strap clamp. Now the strap clamp, I've got two of the step blocks set up here uh, since I'm going up a little bit higher. So you can do them in this method rather than using the steps on the back of the clamp. Whenever you are using any sort of step or strap clamp, try to get it as level as possible. Uh, you definitely don't want it to where the tip is higher than the tail, if you will. Uh, if, if the tail ends up being a little bit higher, that's okay, but you want to get it as level as you possibly can. You could probably handhold in this instance since the uh, hole locations aren't super critical, but just for safety's sake, and since I'm going a little bit on a deeper hole, I thought I'd set up the clamping situation here. It is always safer to clamp rather than attempt to handhold for obvious reasons. And with the number zero starter drill, remember to go nice and slow, back it out frequently to clear the chips and break the chip. The number zeros break quite easily. We're going into aluminum here. The vise is aluminum. Um, it's anodized on the outside, but I don't think that's really going to make much of a difference. Now I've switched to a number 21, and I put a little bit of a paint mark on there, just since we are going deep, and I am using uh, machine screw length drill bits that are a little bit shorter. I don't want to get to the point where I'm drilling up past the, the clearance flutes on the bit. You don't really have to go very deep. I mean, you could only go a quarter inch or half inch deep. But I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit deeper. Uh, just to demonstrate it, now when you do start to go a little bit deeper, you do need to back the bit out completely because sometimes you'll get chips that'll kind of clog up on the end. Particularly with aluminum, since aluminum is a little bit stickier. So this is why we back out, because we can start to get uh, some chips loading up. If you don't back out what you're basically, you're just going to be drilling very, very slow and you're going to be rubbing the walls of the hole a lot. So once you have the hole drilled to the depth you want, um, you can use the tapping trick that I showed you in the video with the strap clamp where you use the, the mill to keep the tap vertical. I'm actually just going to take it off uh, because I'm comfortable with hand tapping it. And I'm going to chamfer that hole and then tap it uh, 1032 to keep with our all of our other 1032 fasteners that we've been dealing with. So now we have that hole in place, chamfered. Do a test fit with a bit of threaded rod. And that's done. Just have to do the same thing on the other side. 
which I'll do off camera. So the next operation we're going to do is to take off a uh, hundred thousandths, so 0.1 inches from the inside face to make moving the clamp a little bit easier and faster. To accomplish that, I've put down a one, two, three block and I've squared it up. And then I'm simply using the face of the vise to square it to the block, making sure that I have this other block set forward enough so that it will not interfere. And I've stacked up our step blocks and I'm using one of the step clamps just as a basic strap clamp. And then on the opposite side, we're going to use a step clamp and a step block on top of the one, two, three block. And then for a cutter, I'm going to use a square end mill, but it has a radius corner on it. The radius corner will um, add a little bit of strength anytime you leave a radius and it'll reduce stress. So, and I think it'll look a little bit nicer as well. So I'm gonna use this. This happens to be a 0 0.062 radius cutter. So I've set my zero height by coming down and touching the cutter. Not particularly necessary, but I'll go ahead and put some lubrication on here. And I'm gonna take out all the little webs with a plunge cut of 90 thousandths. And then I'll come back and do my finishing cuts. Okay, so I have all the plunge cuts of the webs done, took off about 90 thousandths. Um, I think that's the fastest, easiest way to do that. Now I'll take off uh, 10 thousandths in a couple of passes and clean up the edge as well. So I've got my cutter set to height and I'm in a spot where I can spin freely. And I've locked my Z axis. I'm a little eager right now to get this off and cleaned up and see if it still will clamp and hold the piece or if I took too much off because those grooves are looking very shallow to me now. So after a, a brief moment of panic, I got the vise off and cleaned it out and put a piece in there and it does clamp just fine. That, that looked like I'd taken too much off, but it's actually worked out quite well and it is a heck of a lot easier to adjust. And there's still a lot of clamping force there as well. I can't get it to slip. Okay, and our last operation, so we're gonna put a 45 degree angle on this slot here. I'm just gonna use the scale on the side of the angle table. So we don't need to be super precise. So I've gone ahead and locked our Y axis. And I've just roughly lined up the cutter. In fact, I put a couple of nicks in my jaw as I was doing it. So try to avoid that. And we're just gonna do some plunge cuts. So I've gone back to just a regular square in mill. And this probably would have been better if I would have had the piece tilted toward me or if I didn't have the camera where it's at because I'm having a hard time seeing if the alignment is good. So hopefully I'm not taking too off center of cuts. This is just uh, from an appearance standpoint, it's not really going to affect the function 
of the vise if we are off center. We could have actually used a smaller mill, gone to a quarter inch or something along those lines. So let's see what it looks like now from some of my slips and rush. I might have a bit of ugliness on my vise. Yeah, so I was definitely uh, not centered there. I should have taken my time and, and done that better. It also looks like... So even though that's not the best and I, I did nick my the inside of that jaw a little bit, again, it's, it's just going to be appearance. Um, I should have been more careful. That is going to kind of bug me, though. <laughs> um, I'll probably come in and, and clean it up, so just so that I don't have those in there. Um, I wish I wouldn't have made the mistakes, but they're there now permanently. Uh, shows you that you shouldn't rush and should take your time and do things right. And oftentimes I get in a rush and make mistakes such as this. So again, still functional, but but that is... All three operations finished. We've got the 45 degree slot, which allows our jaw to slide back a little bit more. We have the underside webs taken down roughly 100 thousandths to make adjusting the jaws easier. And we've got the two holes drilled and tapped on either side of the vise.